Hey guys, it's me, i one um, Today I'm here with a bit of a more special video. This right here is literally one of the very first videos I ever made. And I was actually considering deleting it since I'm reorganizing my second channel, but it was so much effort and I think it's kind of a shame to just delete it. So I'm gonna re-upload it here to my specifically EVE-based channel because that is the purpose of this channel. Oh yeah, also go check out my second channel, but... I don't know if re-uploading this was worth it, but the quality is a bit odd, but you just tell me in the comments. There once was a dream, a dream called Suspect. It is the year YC-122. At the time, Suspect Squadron was part of an alliance called Lord, which in turn was part of something called Winter Coalition. Since its founding, less than a year prior to the events of this story, Suspect has been ruled by Isabella Ackrey. Known for being a strong and inspiring leader, always dedicated to the cause of his people, he still knew that one man can't rule an empire. So he trusted his corp to the capable hands of three men. Akitsu, the head of economy, a true numbers man. He also was at this point the oldest member of this group. In fact, he was for so long in the group that no one even remembered when he first joined. Honestly, no one even remembered why he got his position. His role was to make sure that the economy works as it is supposed to and that the wallets stay filled. And he did just that, so no one really asked why he was in a position that he found himself in. One time, when the CEO forgot to fuel the stations, he even decided to just go ahead, buy the fuel and fuel the stations himself, while well, he was not even told to do that. To be fair, it was the first time that the stations were supposed to be fueled, so the CEO really was just a jackass. A modest man with no ambition larger than to help where he can. Quite an exception in a world that is ruled by greed and treachery. Never did he ask for bribes or gifts. Only did he do what his duty was. And what he did, he did well. The second of the three was an overly ambitious youngster called Robin Anderson. You can see where this will end. He pushed himself through the ranks very quickly, starting out his career by trying to lead fleets. He wasn't necessarily successful with it, at least originally, but he was confident, and this confidence would be what would make a lot of people suspect him to be a spy. A lot might be the wrong word for it. Almost everyone might be more accurate to describe it. It would turn out to be false, but still prohibit him from reaching any positions of power outside of the corporation he was part of. At this point now, he would already be a director and in charge of recruitment and mentoring. The last of those three would be Kafra Natant. Originally, he was merely a young pilot who joined Nolsec in the hopes of having fun. He had no big dreams, but Isabella gave him dreams. Coming from Losec, he knew how to fight, but didn't strive to be rich or powerful. 
So Isabella would put him at the forefront of every single armed conflict that Suspect had since he joined, and gave him the chance to do the things he never dreamed of. He was not only a director, he was a friend to Isabella, and Catherine would often call himself the voice of reason inside his head to keep Isabella from going fully insane. This insanity he spoke of were Isabella's ideas. There were many of them, normally coming in bulks and fast. They weren't necessarily bad, but they were a lot. One day he would want to create a huge fleet. The next day he would want to become the most populated faction in the entire game, and on other days he would randomly decide to ask Catherine if they could conquer the entire galaxy. Together, those three would form the first triumvirate. It would stand as a staple of stability and a bright future it led ahead, but still it consisted of just three very capable people which carried a lot of weight, as the future would not always be as bright as it was now. For an entire year a war has been raging, the war for Delph. Well, kinda, at this point both sides just dug in with one side refusing to take the last few systems from the defending side, fearing to lose quickly if they try to rush it, and the other side refuses to go on the offensive. At this point, both sides were just trying to cope with the fact that they were going to be stuck in this shitty war basically forever. But there also has been another war going on. A war for the control of the North. One day, the leader of Winter Coalition, a man called Noros, decided to settle down in an area called Vale of the Silent. So when that happened, the original inhabitants were unhappy as they didn't believe in values like civilization. So those barbarians did what barbarians do the best, which is to try and destroy civilization. It just happened to be the case that they really couldn't do a lot, so they tried to hit the coalition economically. So they went after miners, specifically miners mining and rockles. They tended to be easy prey. Generally speaking, they also lacked basic skills and communication, so um, they kinda just died. You would kinda expect them to learn, especially after losing a multiple billion as script, but I guess times never change, do they? But sadly for our barbarian friends, wars aren't won by just killing miners. And Winter Coalition had quite a few things going for them. For one, they happened to have more ships and simply the bigger ships. But they also happened to have the better fleet commander. Their fleets happened to be led by a person called Topkek, a very capable fleet commander. He already had fought some of those groups previously and yet, no, they didn't even have a chance at all. It would always be the same. The Freemen would say they will defend the system to the last man and go on to lose every single time. It was hilarious. But it would be especially a glorious time. For Suspect and for others. Isabella would be very proud of the performance of his pilots and often brag of the numbers they would show up with. This is also when the three men of the North would earn their nickname to be the Women of the North, as after losing quite a number of battles, they basically gave up and stopped fighting. One of those groups that was part of this alliance of barbarians against Winter Coalition was called Boss. One day, they decided to take the only reasonable decision and begged for being allowed to leave Vale with their possessions intact. Norris fought long and hard about this decision. You see? He had a kind heart. He knew that in the end, even those uncivilized had wives and children to return home to. He knew that he would want the same for himself if he was in their situation. He despised barbarians with a deep hatred, but he was a good-hearted ruler, and when he saw the humanity in them, his decision was clear. He granted them their plea for mercy and let them leave with their possessions intact. This massively weakened the so-called free man of the north, not only did they lose their dignity with a really trashy nickname and kept them losing ground, but now they also lost one of their founding members. But while those negotiations were going on, something else would happen. Condemned to evil in his heart from the very beginning, a friend would turn to foe. Topkek, the main commander of the forces of Winter Coalition, would switch sides. He enjoyed their warlike way of life. He never was truly able to confirm into this peaceful way of life civilization offered. All this led him down the dark path to join Volta, the strongest group of them. But he did not simply give them a fleet commander. 
he would cripple the very military hierarchy of the Winter Coalition. At this very moment, their most capable fleet commander would have left. It seemed hopeless. But it wouldn't be the only betrayal at this time. You remember the triumvirate of Suspect from earlier? The one that gave the entire corporation a stability that allowed it to be one of the strongest forces within the Winter Coalition. At this point, the overly ambitious Robin Anderson decided to also backstab Suspect. Yes, backstab. He decided to all of a sudden leave Suspect, take a lot of his most capable members with him and join some random group. Who could have seen this coming? This now left both Suspect and the entire coalition heavily weakened, with the alliance that Suspect was part of having lost almost a hundred members in total. But not all hope was lost. Violet became clear that like this the war would be lost. Another young but experienced fleet commander coming from the Far East would join the Winter Coalition, bringing his entire entourage of comrades with him. Previously, he was a well-respected fleet commander in Pandemic Court, known for his exploits and his ability to keep calm even in the toughest situations. It was him what Winter Coalition needed the most in this dire situation. He would take on the very burden of turning this war around, fighting a foe that was toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. It was clear that the playing field was even again, but the war was far from over. This is also when a new group joined his allies on the side of Winter Coalition. Womp. They would defend Germanate. Another region that was heavily fought over and right next to Vale of the Silent. The stage was set for a great battle, but it didn't happen. No, like, I'm very serious, nothing really happened. What happened is that was Walter would every now and then try to do raids against the Winter Coalition and annoy them by hitting some structures but never going through with it. They would eventually announce to attack one of the stations that Boss handed over to Winter Coalition, but even that would only turn out to be a small skirmish. Really, it kinda became a boring time. At least it seemed like there was temporary peace. For the time being, Volta and Consorts just stuck to hunting and exploding expensive ships. At least a new trend was set, because now it was a lot of jump freighters that exploded for some reason. No one was really sure why, but they just kept on exploding. But things were about to change quite significantly. When there were reports of Imperium forces, specifically in it, marching across the entire galaxy into Losek right in front of Vale, we didn't quite want to believe it. But neither were we ready for what would actually happen. It turned out that in the cover of darkness, in it moved a fleet of hundreds of dreadnoughts across Losek, hundreds of people along with them. This in turn tipped the balance of power in favor of our enemies. While they weren't directly allied, they had a common enemy, and they were going to fight this enemy. A big fight that we hoped for would occur after all. The leadership of Winter Coalition decided to go against a group called Tissue as well, because they were harassing their newfound ally Womp. A battle ensued, and Volta dropped a single capital ship, but out of fear of having in it drop an entire fleet of dreadnoughts if we dropped our capitals, no capitals were used from our side in this battle. It is fair to say that on the day we lost, not only due to being heavily outnumbered and outgunned, but also because fear did dictate what we could do. Not soon after, in it themselves would show up, not anywhere but in our two staging systems, and they would attack the Anseblexes in each of those systems. It became clear that Winter Coalition and Suspect needed both to adapt. Winter Coalition had to learn that they will not always be unchallenged, that they will not always be the biggest group around, and that sometimes you have to learn how to win while being the underdog. And Suspect had to learn that an entire organization 
can't rely on one single person. And that one person missing can create more damage than one can imagine. Cry. 